Lab Rats. This is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to anemia. All right, let's get started. Anemia is defined as the body not having enough healthy red blood cells or enough hemoglobin to carry oxygen to its tissues. Patients with anemia can have a variety of symptoms, including weakness, shortness of breath, and fatigue. Anemia itself is not a disease, but is a symptom. It can be a symptom of something mild or something severe. There are many different forms of anemia, all of which have their own causes. Throughout my lecture series, we will be discussing all the different types of anemia. Of course, this is just an overview of anemia in general. When a patient does not have enough healthy red blood cells or hemoglobin, the bone marrow is able to compensate by producing more red blood cells. It can accommodate by churning out more red uh, cells for around 18 days or so. Unfortunately, there are no other mechanisms to compensate for red cell or hemoglobin loss. So after the bone marrow can no longer compensate for this loss, it, this is when symptoms of the anemia start appearing. So how does a patient get anemia? The patient can just be experiencing blood loss. So an example of this is a chronic GI bleed. So this is where patients have bleeding in their gastrointestinal tract. The patient can also have a premature destruction of their red cells. So an example of this would be a defect in the red blood cells membrane that affects the survival of that red blood cell. Patients can have an impairment in their red cell production. Uh, an example of this would be the result of a failure of the bone marrow, which reduces the production of blood cells. Our job as medical laboratory professionals is to produce accurate, complete blood count results, as well as correct manual differentials. The physician uses these results along with their clinical findings of the patient to determine a diagnosis and an eventual treatment for that patient. I mentioned that the bone marrow is able to accommodate to some degree for blood loss. It does this by producing more red blood cells. It can accommodate by churning out more red cells. Unfortunately, there are no other mechanisms to compensate. So after that bone marrow can no longer compensate for its loss, uh, that is when the symptoms of the anemia start appearing. Now there's a big difference between an acute hemorrhage and a chronic condition that causes anemia. In an acute hemorrhage, which is blood loss that happens suddenly, a sudden loss in blood is substantially more uh, dangerous than the same amount of blood loss that happens over time. And that reason is because if it happens chronically, the bone marrow has enough time to respond and churn out those red cells that it's producing. There are two main adaptive mechanisms the body has to help when the patient has anemia. The first one is that the body tries to increase the oxygenated blood flow. The red cells are what carries the oxygen to the body's tissues, right? So if there is a decrease in hemoglobin or red blood cells, the body wants to stay oxygenated, so it's going to try to increase the flow of oxygenated blood to vital organs. It does this by increasing the heart rate and blood circulation rate and increasing the output of the heart. And this is all trying to provide oxygenated blood to vital organs for as long as it possibly can. Additionally, the body increases its oxygen utilization in the tissues. It does this by increasing the amount of 2,3-DPG and red blood cells. 2,3-diphosphylglycerate, or 2,3-DPG, is a chemical that exists in a small amount in the red blood cells. It functions by changing how oxygen binds to the hemoglobin inside the red cell. This is important in the Bohr effect. I discussed the Bohr effect in, the le uh, in my lecture on hemoglobin. Oxygen competitively and reversibly binds to hemoglobin within the red blood cell. And certain changes within the environment alter the affinity the red blood cell has for oxygen. So check out my lecture on hemoglobin to learn more about this concept. Additionally, the body increases erythropoietin production. Recall erythropoietin or EPO is the hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells. So an increase of EPO is going to lead to an increase in red blood cells. The body also increases transferrin levels. This is a protein that binds and transports iron in the serum and takes it to the tissues. A large portion of the body's iron is in red blood cells. So if it's depleted, the body's going to need to go into hyperdrive, making more transferrin. The more iron there is, the more hemoglobin there is, and thus the more oxygen there is. So the body's doing everything it can to try to support itself when there are not enough red blood cells or hemoglobin present. 
We classify anemias morphologically and also functionally, which we will talk about on the next two slides. Morphologically, we evaluate anemias by looking at the size of the red blood cell. Are they normal size or normocytic? Are they smaller than normal or microcytic? Or are they larger than normal size, which is called macrocytic? We can visually see the size of the red blood cell, but look at the uh, red blood cell indice MCV to actually determine the size. We also look at the color concentration of the red blood cells based on the red blood cell indice MCHC. Do the red blood cells have normal central pallor, called normochromic? Do they have increased central pallor, called hypochromic red blood cells? Or do they have a decreased area of central pallor, called hyperchromic red blood cells? We also look at the shape of the red cell as well as its volume. Now I'm using the terms MCV and MCHC. So those are red blood cell indices. Uh, another red blood cell indice is RDW and MCH. Check out my RBC indice video uh, to learn more about those. We also evaluate anemias based on the functionality of the red blood cells. Are there just not enough red cells being produced for the body to function properly? Are there defects in the maturation of the red blood cell? or defects that lead to the de decreased survivability of that red blood cell? Is the body hemorrhaging, so bleeding excessively, and the bone marrow just can't keep up with the loss? Or also, is the bone marrow just being ineffective at producing red blood cells? So all of these factors lead the physician to make a diagnosis on what type of anemia the patient has. So how do we test for anemia? So a complete blood count or CBC with differential needs to be ordered. This includes something we call an H&H &H or hemoglobin and hematocrit, red blood cell count, red blood cell indices, which are MCV, MCH, MCHC, and RDW, and also morphology of the red blood cells, which is the differential part of the CBC with a differential order. A reticulocyte count also can be ordered. This shows how the marrow is responding. So we'll discuss the retic count on the next slide. So both the CBC with differential and the reticulocyte count are done on a lavender top tube, so whole blood EDTA. And remember, uh, this tube cannot be clotted. If it's clotted, even if it's a super small clot, it has to be, uh, has to be recollected. Uh, we could also do a bone marrow biopsy um, as needed for diagnosis. So back to retic counts. So remember, reticulocyte is the slightly less mature form of the erythrocyte. We see them as polychromasia on our right stained slide. So these would be seen as polychromasia when you're performing a manual differential. The top picture here on the right hand slide shows polychromasia. So here is the polychromasia that I'm referring to. And this is in a right smear or right stain slide. So this is what you're gonna be seeing when you're doing a manual differential on the patient. So that is polychromasia. Um, <clears throat> now the bottom picture shows reticulocytes when they're stained with a super vital stain called pneumethylene blue. So do you see these red cells that have little dots in them? That is, those are reticulocytes. So pneumethylene blue is the super vital stain that we stain uh, retics with. So reticulocytes counts are actually one of the best ways to assess the function of the bone marrow in response to an anemia. In an anemic state, the bone marrow is doing everything it can to compensate for the loss of red cells or hemoglobin. One of those ways is by churning out as many new red blood cells as it can. Uh, so it's going to be releasing younger red blood cells, aka retics. So just like in white blood cell counts, there's a relative count and an absolute count for reticulocytes. And it works the same way as with white blood cells. Uh, so the relative count is a percent of reticulocytes seen per 100 total red blood cells counted. The absolute count takes into account the red blood cell count. So it's the number of retics seen per 100 red blood cells multiplied by the patient's red blood cell count. It used to be that medical laboratory professionals would manually count the reticulocytes. If a retic count was ordered, the patient's blood would be put on a smear, then stain with a new methylene blue stain, and then the retics would be counted per a certain number of red blood cells. Nowadays, most CBC analyzers perform an automated reticulocyte count. There are two parameters used to assess the maturity of reticulocytes. These are the reticulocyte production index, or RPI, and the immature reticulocyte fraction, or IRF. 
The RPI is also called a corrected reticulocyte count as it takes into account for anemia. And, uh, anemia. So in anemic patients, a reticulocyte count is going to be falsely increased because the patient's red blood cells are depleted and the retic count is a percentage out of those total red blood cells. So the RPI corrects for this. So it's not used frequently in human medicine anymore as it was replaced with the immature reticulocyte fraction or IRF. Uh, this is a parameter from an automated analyzer that shows the ratio of immature reticulocytes to the total number of reticulocytes. And at the, uh, the time of this recording, this is the most used reticulocyte uh, parameter um, other than just uh, an actual count percentage count. Alrighty, so that ends uh, this lecture on the introduction to anemias. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. Until next time.